What happened, baby? I spotted yogurt everywhere. In winter, some of the mountains near here, you can actually see snow on the top. Oh, I'm getting hit by hail here. Bouncing around. <laughs> it's, it's just cold. It felt like we were sleeping in a fridge last night. Welcome to Free Range Sailing. Join us as we sail around Australia, visiting its wild places in our 30-foot, 50-year-old sailing boat, Marul. Living off the land and sea while sailing a yacht that costs less than a new car, we show that it's possible to have big adventures with a seaworthy boat on a very modest budget. Never miss an episode of Free Range Sailing again. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button to stay notified of all our upcoming releases. I don't know what you look like first thing in the morning, but this is us. Did you want honey? <laughs> uh, I think I'll just have milk and tea. Okay. So we're having a little bit of a council of war. Where we are in Tasmania, most of this land area is national park. Mm, that's right. And so, the Tasmanian government's closed the national parks for the time being, while there's a um, self-isolation measures in force. Um, <clears throat> so basically we can go places where it's not national park and we can get provisions and that's about it. And we'd kind of planned on doing some things in Tassie that around this part of Tassie, the populated, more populated part that we can't really do now, like go to museums and um, go to the wooden boat building centre in Franklin and things like that and check out some of the really cute historic towns. Yeah. We can't really do that. So, um, yeah, we're sort of trying to decide what to do now. Mm. Because West Coast, we're not. if we go back to the West Coast, it's really beautiful and rugged, but it's um, National, Park. National Park also. So we would be breaking the law if we went ashore. And also we'd be out of touch with... Uh, friends and family, we wouldn't be up to date with what's happening. We want to be up to date all the time with what's happening with the virus. And we also want to be able to upload content for you guys every week so that you've got something to enjoy while you're stuck at home. So, mm, yeah. yeah, we we want to be here for our families, but we also want to be here for you guys. Yeah. And it is starting to get colder. So our our original plan was as winter was going to come, because we don't have a heater on Marul, um, because she's just a, sm a very small boat, you know, like when I got her seven years ago. That's right, seven years. <laughs> um, the plan was just to sort of go around northern Australia and get into little creeks and uh, just having a tight little simple boat that I didn't really care if I scuffed up the paint. That was the sort of design brief. But here we are in Tassie, so we don't have a heater. And we don't have heaps of space. Like, if we're going to spend a lot of time indoors, um, I can reach across Marul. I can touch both sides simultaneously. <laughs> it's only a couple of metres here. Yeah, and we've both got, like, getting sore backs from being on the boat because it's quite hard to do a proper stretching routine on the boat. So you've got to do a modified one. But, mm. yeah. Yeah. But that's enough of our problems. <laughs> so what, the, what, what we're looking at now is we've been weighing up going back up to the Ferno group because there's more islands that aren't national parks so we can go ashore. Um, we don't necessarily want to be cooped up in this space all the time. Mo mo the best thing about our house is the backyard, to be to be totally frank with you. But it's also winter's coming and we had planned to get off the boat and do a refit. Yes. How long has it been since our refit? Uh, nearly two years. <laughs> two years. No, we've totally run this like a commercial fishing boat. I'm going to make a skipper's call. So what we're going to do is over the next two weeks, we'll just trickle our way back to Hobart and we'll see how the land lies. Okay. Raining and cold out there. And so I thought I'd make us some soup for lunch and it's taken me 30 seconds. 
I've cut up two sweet potatoes and one onion, just a rough chop, put it in the pressure cooker, covered it with water, put a tablespoon of really good quality bone broth um, concentrate. I'm just gonna put the lid on and that's lunch. Just bring it to pressure for like five minutes and it should be cooked. Soup's ready. Just put a spoonful of yogurt in there, some salt and pepper. It's like instant food. Didn't have to do it much, did we? Faster than two minute noodles. Bit of hail falling. Well, we were just remarking that it's feeling a little bit colder. <laughs> this uh, this weather system that's coming through, you know, like it's dragging a fair bit of wind up from uh, from Antarctica with it. So we're actually seeing a little, a couple of little hailstones starting to, <laughs> starting to fall. So that's proof of the pudding. In winter, some of the mountains near here, you can actually see snow on the tops. Oh, I'm getting hit by hail here. I'm bouncing around. <laughs> so the hail stopped, but we don't really care anyway. This dodger, it protects us from all sorts of weather. Of all of the, you know, look, this hatch can pretty much remain open. The only time we close it really is to retain the heat because it's starting to get cold. But we've had torrential downpours now, we've had some hail and you know, we can just leave that hatch open, get good airflow of all the things that, um, that we've done to the boat. Even though it's like a little bit rough and ready, this Dodger has definitely, definitely been the biggest contributor to the livability on board the boat, I would say. What happened, baby? I splattered yogurt everywhere. <laughs> to try and conserve on fuel, I've just been doing it straight into the thermos because then I don't have to reheat water to heat up the container. Anyway, basically I'm used, making yogurt in the thermos at the moment and I tipped it up and it wouldn't go out so I gave it a shake and it fell out and splattered me everywhere. It did. This camera's misting up. I feel like it's in my hair. I just like brushed and like got my hair clean today. Pascal just discovered something that I discovered. Have you done this before too? Years before. <laughs> and that is that when you're using a thermos to make yogurt and you upend it, it actually creates a vacuum. It's very resistant to coming out until it comes out and then it comes out in a rush and sort of explodes everywhere. <laughs> what I'm about to tell Pascal, you may as well know as well, that if you want to get yogurt out of a thermos, it's really great just to get a chopstick <laughs> and just put it in and it will just ease out very in a controlled fashion. I did think about getting the spatula, but <laughs> I don't know why I didn't get it. There's two ways of learning something. <laughs> I, I'm all, I always marvel at your even temperament. Do you know how I reacted when it happened? I, I, I came really close to making a bigger mess than the yogurt did when it happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> this yogurt is still really nice and warm though, and Pascal's done a great job. This is really <laughs> thick, and that is what led to the problem. Oh yeah, look at that. 
we've got some on the on the pad there. No doubt there's a bit on my diary. Oh, it's probably on the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, there's some look there's some here on the window. That's really great. And the great thing is that we've got a white boat, so there's gonna be some yogurt we just never find. <laughs> until until we smell it later. There's some over here. Over there. <laughs> no, I think it's just paint chips. Yuck. Maybe I'll just wipe this. Oh, yeah, yeah there's I, some I would, here. I would give that a general <laughs> wipe. You did way better than I did, though. You mean managed it, or like I did less mess than when you, you did it? Less mess, <laughs> managed your temper. <laughs> you didn't get as covered as I got. No, really, that's why you got angry. I got really angry. We were just having such a nice evening enjoying the riding of Peter Cundall of ABC Gardening Australia <laughs> and then this happened. So it's been in the pouring rain and it's been particularly cold. We, we had to shut up the boat so we've sort of had a little trapped water cycle going on human beings sort of put out quite a bit of water vapour and we've heated it up so warm moist air has been touching the the boat and now we've got um, quite a bit of condensation to deal with just in the in the bedroom here luckily the roof of our bedroom is only about the size of a dining room table <laughs> so <laughs> what it means is we've got we can wash down our the roof of our boat with distilled water yeah. very fancy and it looks like yep the sun's coming out, so some of our clothes that might have gotten wet, we can hang up. Hopefully. I don't think they've got that wet. Yeah, that's good. I think mine are a bit wetter than yours. In normal weather, we can um, in normal weather we can just leave the boat open, and the airflow is enough that it, it doesn't really happen too badly. Normally, because the inside air is the same temperature as the outside, the outside air, air, so you don't have condensation. But with all this rain, we've had super high humidity. Um, the rain's falling on the boat and strong winds, so you've got wind chill, so the boat, it, it's, it's cold. It felt like we were sleeping in a fridge last night, didn't it? <laughs> Pesky thinks we're sleeping in a fridge. Our condensation problems probably aren't helped by <laughs> Our limitations mean that drying our wet weather gear sort of has to happen inside because there's nowhere outside where we can do it because it's pouring with rain. Well, it's not now because it's sunshine, so I'm about to go and hang everything out in the sun. But um, what, what is happening in common today with just about every other day is the weather systems are moving so fast today. So we'll probably get bands of rain coming through and then bands of sun, so we better keep an eye on it. Mm. Oh, they're nice and dry. But that moisture had to go somewhere, and I bet you some of it is <laughs> on the roof. The condensation in here is not nearly as bad. It's mainly where we were, and that's because so much of our, our breath was coming out, and we were really warming up the air in there. The air out here is quite cold. I can feel it. I need a coffee as soon as possible. So cold air doesn't hold as much moisture as warm air, does it? So it's not quite the same problem, which is great. You know, just that wipe down is only limited really to the to the bunks. Join us next week as we depart Recherche Bay and head north towards Hobart, stopping along the way to fill our larder with some wild seafood. These oysters are perfection. What's that? Whoa. So that's a good one for seeing why they're called blue mackerel. We look forward to joining you next week. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button as it really helps recommend our video to a broad audience.